Hello, Fritz the Jovial. Thank you for joining me on this very special episode. Today, I want to tell you about my custom BMW R9T. Roll that opening splash screen. I originally came from um, a Yamaha 750 LTD, uh, which is a classic sort of touring bike, road touring bike, four cylinder, not very much torque, not very much horsepower, but it was a great starter bike and maybe a bit beyond a starter bike. And I rode the hell out of that bike. Uh, I was doing a lot of interstate, so I was traveling hundreds of miles. Uh, in a day or at least a hundred miles in a day and that was for my job and my life at the time was sort of Discombobulated I was spread out all over the place. So I was I was doing a lot of pretty heavy commuting on this bike um, And that's where I got all my riding experience. So when I moved to the East Coast and I'd gotten rid of the LTD I um, I always had this love for the motorcycles and so that's how I came upon uh, getting a bike eventually which would be um, about 10 years later I would get a bike again so there was a 10 year period where I wasn't riding today um, I'm gonna tell you about the, the story about how my motorcycle came to be and what modifications I've made to it since I purchased it. Um, the story goes, I was walking down the street with some friends and I saw this really pretty heavily modded uh, R9T sitting on the street next to this Ducati. Um, well, I, what, what is it? It's a, like maybe a Ducati monster. Is that sound right? Anyway. Um, so these bikes were just sitting there and I didn't know that the R9T even existed then. This was in 2015, I think, 2014, 2015. This bike had just come out and this guy had already done some really heavy mods to it. He replaced the, uh, the air box and, and, um, and he's got the knobby tires on there and he's got a custom seat cover and some funky grips and, you know, um, I actually didn't take a picture of the exhaust at this juncture because I didn't know that that would have been a big deal. Uh, but I just saw this bike with the knobby tires and thought, man, that looks crazy. What is it? How do I find out about it? And how do I get one? Uh, now at the time I was not really on the market and I didn't have the money so I had to take a loan out but I wanted that bike. And sure enough, I looked it up online, I found it, and within, well, that summer, I, I owned my own 2014 BMW R9T stock. But it had the spoke wheels, which I wanted. It had the uh, upside down or inverted fork, um, and you know the adjustable rear shock. But otherwise, um, everything on the bike was standard. Uh, now I had already done a, a huge amount of research on the bike and I had seen a really heavily modded bikes and I decided what I liked and what I didn't like. I liked the original stock look but with some slight modifications to make it look a little less generic. So I wanted to swap out the seat, I wanted to swap out the uh, cylinder head covers, um, I wanted to get rid of the stock mirrors, which were very GS looking, very, you know, BMW sort of generic stock. And I wanted to swap out the exhaust because the exhaust really covers that, um, that single arm uh, rear fork, the, the swing arm, that I love so much. And I wanted to see that exposed wheel. So first thing I did, I did all the tooling myself. I um, you know, I did all the wrenching myself. So I, I got the bike um, and I eventually paid it off. But within um, that year, I had already bought a, the uh, Acroprovic uh, slip-on for uh, the titanium slip-on for, for the bike. 
And I put that on and then I thought, okay, that's good, but um, clearly I want to make some pretty heavy changes. I got uh, the Acropovic uh, headers, the exhaust headers. I put those on. I left the butterfly valve in because at 5,000 it opens up if I really want the power. And uh, it, there's also some benefit to having that check valve this is debatable and I'm not you know gonna get into this some people believe there's a benefit I like BMW engineers I think they do a good job overall designing their engines and their exhausts I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel so I left the check valve there um, I removed the charcoal uh, gas overflow and then I went into some smaller mods like swapping out the seat um, and the, the tail end, which I thought, again, looked generic. And like I mentioned before, the, the cylinder uh, covers um, were very GS looking and I, didn't, I wanted a more custom look for the bike. Uh, so that really covers the major modifications I made to this and that racked up quite a bill all on its own. Um, I was really shocked when I got into customizing the bike just how expensive things that didn't seem like they should be expensive uh, were. Like that seat was a um, thousand bucks and you know, or the the uh, the uh, tidy kit for the, the tail end with the license plate and I, I moved that down to the swing arm, the license plate down to the swing arm. That was a few hundred bucks right there and what arrived was this sort of PNG universal kit for all license plates in all countries. It was so janky. I ended up uh, just fabricating my own sort of plate that my license plate went onto. Uh, the, the seat kit, uh, which is from, it's a London uh, shop. I think it's called uh, Unit Garage. I'll put a link down in the doobly-doo for all of this stuff. So in case you want to price it out or you want to buy any of this stuff, um, you can check it out. Also, the uh, the valve um, cylinder head covers, those are actually made by BMW as far as I understand, but they're designed by Roland Sands and they have that really retro look, the throwback to the 70s, R80s and R90s. Uh, and I really love that look. So I had to get those, those were a thousand bucks. Uh, for the covers, I believe. Don't quote me on any of the prices here. Um, so anyway, and with the change to the exhaust, I got this kick-ass sound to the motor. It really like, sort of like, makes it a lot more breathy and you hear like a lot of the more guttural sounds of the exhaust. It, it, that engine sounds so good. The, so that's the the story um, of this bike and you know when I saw it on the street that day I knew I had to have it I went and bought it and then I went and started modding it um, but in the process uh, of doing all the research I saw so many cool bikes um, you know like just amazing looking bikes that clearly people spent uh, even at uh, the shop where I bought it, which is um, Max BMW. I recommend them, by the way. They're one of the best dealerships in the country. But, um, shout out to Max BMW. Uh, but when I went in there and started shopping, they told me stories about people who wanted to black out their R9T. They spent thousands of dollars doing these custom mods. That's not gonna be me, A, because I don't have an unlimited budget, and B, I still like the aesthetic of the of the original BMW R9T. 
uh, just with some customization to make it mine. Uh, and you don't get the money back when you go to sell these bikes, by the way. If you do a bunch of custom modding on it, don't expect that all the thousands you put into it, you're gonna get out on that sale date. That money's basically gone. Uh, so if you're looking for a return on investment, buy stock and then sell it as stock. And you know, that's the best way to do it. These bikes really do keep their value though. If you, if you treat them well, take care of them, uh, you'll, you'll get your money's worth out of it. And then when you go to sell it, you'll, you'll still have some uh, return on your initial investment. The thing about the R9T is, whoa, the power, the torque on this motorcycle is insane. It's 1200 cc, so, and it has a lot of low end torque and it's geared really well. Uh, gears one through five, it's a six speed, but gears one through five will really crank. Um, and uh, it's got a lot of house, horsepower on the high end as well when you really rev it. So all through the power band, you really never feel like there's, there's something lacking there. You always feel the tug of this monstrous power. Um, and also the, the, the engine, because it is a boxer engine, it is very low to the ground, which means as you're cornering, the thing just corners like a dream. I mean, you really, it gives you so much like almost artificial confidence as you're cornering this bike that, you know, that I, maybe I shouldn't have because it just performs so well. Uh, it, and it grips the road so well. And while it is, um, it can be a heavy bike in stock configuration, uh, it just, you know, manipulating the bike is so easy once you're rolling. Um, it also is very low to the ground. So for um, maybe an hour ride, you're good and comfortable, but after that, you're gonna wanna stretch out your legs and stand up a bit uh, because it's not made for really long rides. Uh, the stock seat was actually more comfortable for longer rides than the seat I have now, which is kind of interesting. Again, that was a thousand dollar seat and here I am, you know, sort of complimenting the stock BMW seat because it was more, more comfortable. So that's also something that you should consider when you're modding your bike. Uh, the designers who design the bike, especially BMW, but all motorcycle brands really do a really great job of outfitting their, their bikes in the stock configuration, whether it's for comfort or um, you know performance for the engine. However, they are generally uh, not as loud as you would like. I mean, you don't need a motor motorcycle to be loud. I think that we've killed this myth that loud motorcycles are safer. Uh, and you can look at other videos that talk about that in depth. Uh, you can't hear a motorcycle when it's coming from behind you. So that, uh, that pretty much kills that. Although comment down in the doobly-doo if you guys want to have it out about it or you know, whatever. I'm not getting involved in that conversation. I just like a, a loud motorcycle because I want to feel what, you know, I want to hear what I'm feeling. And uh, when you get that sync between this powerhouse engine and, you know, this really uh, guttural clap coming from the exhaust, uh, that just, you know, makes it like a dream experience. There are days when I just don't feel that great and I can get on this motorcycle and there is no way within five minutes of riding that I feel anything but pure joy. That's how how fun this bike is. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's also such a glamorous bike. Every time I bring this bike out, I almost every single time I get a comment. It's not a chick magnet, it's, it's a dude magnet. I mean, if you're into that, cause I mean, guys just love this bike. So, uh, what, you know, you take this thing out, you're gonna start a conversation. And so many great people in the motorcycle world, um, the, the whole industry, the, the, the community, is, is just full of really great people, which I've always been thrilled with. I mean, to have something like this that is such a conversation starter, it's really awesome. Uh, so if you don't have one, I absolutely recommend one. If you have one, 
check out some of the mods that I did and uh, price it out for yourself and see if it's you know floats your boat and and maybe that's uh, what you want to do as well and by all means you know I, I hope this video helps you on your quest Um, thank you so much for joining me and I'm glad I finally got to share the, all these custom mods that I made to my bike with you guys. I know you've been waiting for it. So thank you for joining me and uh, if you like this video, you want to see more videos of my bikes, uh, click like and subscribe um, and then I'll just keep releasing videos of these bikes and custom mods and we'll do more and more and more. I mean, the sky's the limit and and now that I'm quarantined, for now anyway, I might as well make videos about motorcycles. Uh, it's getting warm out, I'm getting excited. Uh, comment down below if you have anything you want to add or anything you know that I said or whatever. And as always, I hope you guys are good and healthy, uh, ride safe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Did that work? I think it did. <laughs> so many cool bikes. So many cool.